Hi, and welcome today to this episode of Dorm Room Theater. So this is a crash course for college students who want a little, want to know a little bit more about theater and its origins. So we're going to start with something that we all have wondered about, and that is mime. Mime is just so prevalent in our popular culture, the mime in the box and the silent mime. But what really is mime? Is it just some silly thing that gets brought up in popular culture? No, it's so much more than that. So today we're going to take a deep dive into that here in my dorm room. <laughs> So there are a lot of different kinds of mime we could focus on, starting all the way back in ancient times with the Greeks and the Romans, and that's really awesome. But it will take a lot of time to try to go into all of that, and that's actually a whole nother Crash Course video that's already been done. So instead of focusing on ancient mime, we are going to jump forward into French mime. I love France, French food, um, you know, croissants. Who doesn't love croissants? But we're not talking about French food. We're talking about mime, a theatrical tradition that really came to prominence in France. So how did it come to prominence, you may ask? That's a very good question. There were a lot of, let's face it, men that were really influential in making this happen. So buckle up and get ready for a lot of French names. So we're going to go into the 16th and 17th century now with Commedia dell'arte, which is an Italian theatrical tradition that is really fun and involves a lot of physical acrobatics and farce and comedy. There were many stock characters in Commedia dell'arte, including the Zani, which were the servants, and the Arlecchino pictured here, the Scapino, the Datoro, the Coviello, a lot of Italian names. One thing that was really crucial was that every character had a different mask. This mask work will heavily influence mime later on. And this really was impactful in France because it became extremely popular in Paris. Jean Gaspard de Bureau got his debut in 1817, and he turned out to be one of the most impactful mimes, and therefore is considered the founder of classical mime theater. He popularized the character of Pierrot, which is a stock character of Commedia dell'arte. You might recognize him from the film Les Enfants du Paradis, or uh, the film Children of Paradise from 1945, where uh, De Bureau is portrayed by Jean-Louis Béraud. Uh, and Béraud was a very influential early mime um, artist as well. I will now delve into the genealogy of mimes and their students that leads us to our main four mimes that I'll be focusing on today. This starts with Jacques Copeau, who started a theater in 1921 to resist what he saw as the oppressive realism of the time. One of his students was Etienne de Creux. He is the founder of Corporeal Mime, which really focuses on embodiment and use of physicality as the main method of conveying the story. Now, Descloux brings us to our two main camps of mime, that of Marcel Marceau, the white-faced mime, or that of Jacques Lecoq, the embodiment of physical theater. We have these two branches and their two disciples, Marceau's named Samuel Avital, and that of Lecoq, the Mumenchan's mask mime theater founded by Frasetto. To help us visualize all these different French guys that influence mime, let's actually go to the thought bubble. Marcel Marceau is who you might think of when you think of mime. He was completely silent and every motion was precise. He actually created the illusion that he was doing whatever it was, even without any props. He was influenced by Charlie Chaplin to create his famous character called Beep, 
which was a type of clown that reoccurred in many of his performances. And he was also part of the French resistance movement against the Nazis. Jacques Lecoq had a very different approach to mime. He even referenced Marceau as the mime who killed mime. So he really emphasized mask use and physical theater. He even used words, so he wasn't completely silent. But he was influenced by Commedia dell'arte. One of his most famous techniques was the seven levels of dramatic tension, pictured here, one being catatonic, then laid back, economic, alert, suspense, or melodrama, passionate, or tragic. This was a technique to help physicalize the emotions. Our very own David Falchu studied with Lecoq and said he was his most influential teacher. Marceau's main student that I'm focusing on is Samuel Avital. He was born in Morocco, and then he studied in France for a period of time. Then he came to the United States in 1971, founded the Centre de Silence in Boulder, Colorado. He therefore brought the French mind techniques to the United States and popularized them. Fun fact, he also was a teacher of Kabbalah, which is Jewish mysticism, and my mom went to study mime with him in the 1980s. Mumenchan's Mask Theater was originated by two Swiss actors, Bernie Schurch and Andres Bossard, and they met up with Floriana Frassetto, who was already a young actress. They became a trio that recognized instant success um, once they started performing their uh, full-body masks, and they emphasized Lecoq's principle of play and having fun in one's work. So now that we've taken a deep dive into all these varied and different ways that one can mime, please enjoy my own personal exploration into mime and how it connects with our word community for the semester. I try to explore what it would be like to connect with others and how mimes can develop that connection even without words. Enjoy. 